If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'll be going to Psalm 102, this morning's message. It's good to see each and every one of you here today. You all don't look like you're very enthusiastic, though. I thought maybe we should uh, do some exercise. We could do some exercise to get the blood flowing and get everybody all ready to roll. Now you're just ignoring me. Now, it's good to, sat, good to see each and every one of you here this morning. I'm glad that you are here. It seems like it's been a while since I've been here. Uh, and so it, things look just a tad bit different to me. I don't know why. They, it's like this tree over here. I think it's grown since the last time I was here. For anybody who didn't catch that, that's a fake tree over here. So it hasn't grown at all. Uh, remembrance. There are things in life that, that are very easy to remember. They're just just that way. There are, uh, if you want to talk about cars, talk to Carson, because uh, he knows everything that there possibly is to know about any car that is out, actually out there. And I know this because as we're driving down the road, he tells me about every vehicle that we pass. So I know that he, he knows a whole lot. It, either he knows a whole lot about cars, or I know very little. So you can look at it for either way you want. Uh, there are things in life that that are hard. I, I'm terrible, and this is a, this is one of those things as far as being a pastor, which is an awful thing to not be able to remember. But I have a hard time remembering names. Yeah, Bob. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, it's just, I just have a hard time, and, and it takes repetitiveness to finally get me to actually be able to to remember a face with a name. Now, I can remember faces all the time. I can I can tell you who this person is and where I, or where I met this person or, you know, but then to, to attach a name to it, that, that becomes the, the problem. Remembrance. We, we are going to be celebrating... Uh, a Memorial Day, and I know, I know for a fact that we don't celebrate Memorial Day the way that it was intended to be celebrated. You know, it was time, it was really meant to, to stop and reflect upon the sacrifices that have been made by people for our freedoms that we enjoy so much uh, here in America. Now it's really about barbecue. You know, it's about families get together. It might be that you might find yourself going to a cemetery and and remembering the life of an individual who has passed from from this life, you know, and so you might do that. That might be incorporated within the idea of uh, Memorial Day for you. Uh, but like I said, it's it's just not what it used to be. I, I when I was began to think about this and think about the, the message this morning, I I thought about our communion table because in our, on our communion table it just says. Uh, do this in remembrance of me. That we we there there is a communion which we have as as a as a body together. That uh, will shut everything else down for a little while, so that we might take a, a moment in our in our life to remember the sacrifice in which Jesus made for each and every one of us. It's it's a memorial. The the children of Israel they had memorial after memorial after memorial after memorial. They didn't just memorialize one thing, but they they put rocks in places that they could go back to somewhere down the line in their, uh, and, and remember what what took place at this moment in time. Before they crossed the Jordan, they, they, they put up uh, stones so that they might be able to remember the time in which their forefathers passed over on the other side of Jordan. They remembered that. And so we, what we do today in, in, in trying to remember the certain things in which uh, are important to us, we, we, we look to the sacrifices in which Jesus began, that he started. And we, go, we can go back further than that if you want. I think Brother Chuck did a, a good job of bringing out this morning the fact that they, they memorialized their prophets. And the thing about the prophets were is that it was their, their hierarchy who actually killed the prophets. But they, met, they, they took time out to remember them. 
We remember what Jesus did for us. We remember the sacrifices of all the different uh, men who spoke up for uh, for for freedom, for for love, for for redemption, and how that they gave their their lives as sacrifices for for us to be able to enjoy those things today. We're going to take a little bit of a look at that this morning as we kind of go through this. Uh, the, like I said, the, the title for the morning message is Remembrance. It comes out of the book of Psalm 102, uh, where in verse 11 we read, My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to, uh, for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. Let's go to the Lord and word of prayer. Father in heaven, we bow in your presence this morning. We are grateful uh, to you for all that you have done for each and every one of us. We are thankful for, for the sacrifices that have been made over the years for our uh, benefit for our freedoms, for the things in which we we many times take for granted, but yet these are things that have been provided for us because people were willing to stand and people were willing to fight. We're most grateful this morning for Jesus who came uh, into this world, left left everything behind so that he might lay down his own life as a sacrifice for our sin. Father, not, not, not that we deserve anything that you have done for us, but because you, of the great love in which you have for us, you, you're, Jesus came into this world, and Jesus uh, laid his uh, life down as a sacrifice. The scriptures say that nobody took it from him, but that he willingly laid down his life. And so, Father, we are grateful today. We are grateful for the fact that we have this place to come to, that our children and our grandchildren and our and our spouses and our friends can come and we can all join together in, in worship and in praise of your holy name for the things in which uh, you have done and provided for us. And so, Father, we, we with grateful hearts this morning ask that you would watch over each and every one of us and help us that we might uh, look to what it is that you, that you have provided for us today so that we might re- receive it within inside of our lives. And Father, we pray for those who might be listening online, that, that if there be one out there that does not know Jesus as their Savior, that today might be the day they, they recognize their great need that they have in their life to accept Jesus and Jesus only for their salvation. Father, be with me and help me that I might present your word in a way to be pleasing in your sight, that you might receive all the honor and glory, for you are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. I find Psalm 102 to be very kind of enlightening to the to to many different factors in which we uh, sometimes look at, and like I told you, the memory is is a, is a tough thing, uh, and and to be able to always remember the things in which you need to be able to actually remember, and and put those things into into place. My wife, she would tell you that one of the things I have a very hard time remembering is to tell her things, right? I mean. She will tell you that 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 I'm like this island off to myself, and I never really tell her anything that she needs to know until the time in which it actually she needs to know it. That then all of a sudden, then it's a surprise that I tell that I tell her, and she lets me know that you should have told me this sooner. I have a bad memory. Memory is a tough, tough thing. It would be good for me to be able to do, to do as the uh, patriarchs had done, and that is to set up. Uh, stones to remember certain things by because maybe that would actually help me maybe if i carry it around a brick in my pocket uh with a certain thing on it and i can and that that weight in itself would remind me that there's something i should be remembering right about now uh but that isn't the case what i would like to say to you this morning and i hope that you actually are paying attention that you are very fortunate not to have to rely upon my memory. Okay? That, that, that is very fortunate. What you are also very fortunate of today is that Jesus knows. Right? That there is nothing that he does not know at this moment in time that he, that he could 
reveal unto each and every one of us. We might say to ourselves, when is it that the Lord is going to return? We would say, but I don't know. We can see the signs. We can see the many different things that are going on in the world. But I really, truly don't know. Uh, Jesus would say that, that only the Father in heaven knows the, the very hour, the very time, the very moment in which Jesus will return. But we do know this, that Jesus knows that he's coming back because he did tell. And what he does know in that he is coming back is that he knows those who are coming back with him. And so he knows today whether or not you have made arrangements to have an eternity in heaven with him or not. Matter of fact, the scripture says in 2 Timothy 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And I, that, that just made me happy when I, when I, when I, I read that, because, because I realize and I understand the, the, the deficiency within my own ability to remember things I need to remember. But it's, it's a nice thing to know that I don't have to remember this because the Lord does. And if the Lord knows this, then it, it really doesn't matter what I know or what I don't know. He knows. And so he goes on to tell them uh, in that, that scripture, he says, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If it be so that you have come to a point in time in your life that you have accepted Christ as your, as your Savior, and you identify yourself in this life with him, then he says, then depart from those things which would not identify you as being one of his. In, in other words, he says, the Lord knows whether or not you are his or not. But what the world doesn't know. In, in many ways, we're, we're living a life trying to prove who we are to everybody else all the time. Jesse would talk to us this morning about putting into practice the things in which the scriptures have to teach. To put it into practice some of those things that might be even harder for us to actually be able to do. Such things as letting go of the cares of this world because we can't do anything about it but to give those things over to the Lord who can, right? So, so here we are finding ourselves in a place where we, what we need to be able to do is identify ourselves with Christ in this life because he knows that we are his, but the world doesn't know. Remembrance. Our life ought to be a written testimony of everything that God has done for all of mankind. That our, our lives ought to portray to those who are around us. Hey, if you're a parent, you are going to always be the very best person for your children to look at to be able to see who Jesus is. You may, you may say, but my mom, my, my, their grandparents are going to be good role models. Well, they're going to look to their parents before they look to their grandparents. So the best person to, to relate to Jesus to, to your children will always be you. It's a, it's, a, it's a thing of remembrance, to remembering who we are, to remember what we stand for, to remembering who we're trying to, to live for and who we're trying to, to show unto what Jesus really has done and what Jesus is continuing to do in our life. We are, by the way, just dying creatures. <laughs> Look around you. We are all just dying creatures. I was thinking of this... Uh, 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 today, you know, you, I, I went to the store yesterday. I was feeling pretty good about things. Like I mowed the yard, right? And it takes me a lot to mow, my, mow that yard over there. My, my South 40, it's, it's hard to, to mow. I, I went out back. I cleaned up the mess that was out there, which my dogs created. I, I got the pool up and running. It's, 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 it's doing just fine. I, the levels are just perfect. And so I felt was feeling pretty good about myself. Went to the store. I'm walking around. I'm I'm picking up the things in which I need to pick up for for two meals. I'm thinking two meals at a time at this moment in time. And so I'm 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 reach out to grab the tortillas, and my back went out. And I'm thinking to myself, how how can this be? How, how can everything in life be going so perfect and everything going just? swimmingly, and you reach out for just a package of tortillas, and you're brought to your knees. 
and if you need, if you need to know how I really felt about it, just just ask my wife. She she'll tell you how much I whined all day long. Yeah, it was. I was in bad shape just for picking up the tortillas. How is it? How has it come to the point that you could be going? just swimmingly, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you look up from a gurney, and you see a doctor hovering over you. No, that didn't happen yesterday. I didn't have the doctor hovering over me just from picking up the tortillas. But I'm just saying that you could go from point A to point B in no time at all. We are a, we are a dying creature, but we serve an everlasting God. When When we consider many times you know the the darkness that's that surrounds us the uh the deadness that is is always there and even you know our inability sometimes to be able to muster up a prayer in any fashion or form that that should go before the throne of god you know don't you think it's a good thing that god has his own means by which our words get to him because if you I, if you just Go over the scriptures a little bit, and you in Romans the eighth chapter, I believe, you'll what you'll see is our prayers are are they reach they reach the throne of God by by way of first the Spirit, and then as we are we are in the Spirit praying unto the Lord, not in in our own spirit, understand, but the Spirit of God takes our prayers and He takes them before the throne of grace. And and they don't just go straight there, but they got to go through Jesus himself. That's why we end every prayer in the name of Jesus, let it be, right? Because they go through the blood of Christ to get to the Father. So here's the means by which our prayers enter into, into heaven. And it's not anything about us, but everything about God and what God has done. So it made me start also thinking about all the different things in, in Scripture, things that mean something to us, things that are important, teachings and doctrines that, that we adhere to and that are, are that they, to us they, they resonate and are, and are very meaningful. Things like salvation. Salvation in itself being a gift of God unto each and every one of us that is not by any works in which we can do, but simply by what God has already done for us in Christ. Right, that is a, a precious uh, teaching in which we adhere to, and always want to to remember it. The 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 teaching of of freedom and liberty, which many times I think has gone overlooked. We 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 stand in a position as as Americans wanting to fight for our liberties, and it's sad that you, it feels like we have to fight against each other to get it. But you, you see, we have the same thing in our in our spirit in the spiritual realm, is that we have a, a battle that has to be fought in order to be able to attain to the liberty in which God has given unto us. That that in all reality, too often people want to put works in the mix of all of it, which distorts what liberty is all about. That when we when we say that we have to perform this and this and this in order to be accepted by God, we have we have taken the the whole concept of of spiritual liberty to a whole different degree, because we're saying that it still is dependent upon how we are and not what God has done. Also, I think one of the ones that goes un un thought of is is redemption. Redemption. We are unworthy of so much of what God has done. We are we we could never in any way attain to those things by the things in which we do. We 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 were fa found to be failures in Adam. And it continued on down that this way down through life that that we would always fall up short that when it came down to to acceptance and and, and things like that we find that that Abel had offered an offering unto God that that was acceptable because it wasn't of his own hands 
But Cain tried to offer up to God a sacrifice that, that had to do with what he had done. Abel was accepted. Cain was rejected. And, and we, we find that line of thought, that whole premise, following through the Scriptures all the way down the line. You know that? That, that Esau was rejected and Jacob was accepted. Why? Because this was the choice in which God himself had made. And I, and, I'm, and I say this to you because if we, can't, if we don't remember these things, then we're going to forget the battle that was fought for our redemption. That when Jesus went to the cross, he did that for you and I. That he, that he laid himself down as a sacrifice for our sins so that we might be redeemed, that we might be purchased out from underneath that, that slavery market which we stood in. We were dying creatures in need of help. And this is something worth remembering. He says, my days are like a shadow. There is no remedy. Night is coming upon me, but thou, O Lord, shall endure forever. My life. It's, I, I hope our kids really, truly, 100% enjoy their life today as they're growing up. And as, as they're experiencing different things, with, you know, no matter what it might be, but to, just to, to enjoy the life in which they have to live, to be able to run and, 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 and be free and, and not to have to worry over all the different things that are going on in, the, in this world or, in, or, or in, even as they begin to get older and all of a sudden they're going to get jobs and they're gonna get, they have to be able to pay for this, they have to be able to pay for that. No, enjoy life now while you can. Don't try to grow up too quickly. Allow yourself to, to grow up naturally, but just enjoy life in, in the moment in, because life will pass you by like that. We're a shadow. We, we're, we're, we're growing older. But the Lord, He will endure forever. See, connect yourself to that which is eternal always remembering that your life is but a vapor. Because if you'll attach yourself to the eternal one, then what, what you'll see is that your life is, is still lived out here in the bigger, in the bigger uh, picture of it all. Even though your life in itself is small. Now, let me put it to you this way. See if I can. I've been off for a couple of weeks, so I'm still trying to get back into it. Our life is transient. And what that means basically is this. It means that we possess, we, we, we possess a, a, a spot of ground for just a short period of time, and then somebody else is going to come along and occupy that space. We'll no longer occupy that space. Somebody else will. And I was thinking on it, on that, about that on this level. For those of you who have ever gone to a concert, or ever gone to a sporting event, somewhere where you had to purchase your ticket and your seat at the same time. Okay, there are a lot of concerts that we've gone to. You just you're free to flow in and free to flow out as as you will. But I want I want you to really think about it on the level of a person who has to rent a seat for an hour and a half for whatever it might be that 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 you're going to concert, uh, ball game, whatever it might be. What you don't see is after you have left, somebody else comes in and takes that seat, right? You're there. It's your seat for a, a certain amount. I, I always hated it because whoever I would go to always made me sit on the inside and I wanted to sit on the outside. I wanted the seat out here where I can get up and go at will. But here's my seat, okay? So my seat's three seats in. That's where I sit. Three seats in, that's where Jeff sits. Jeff has to climb over everybody to use the restroom. Three seats in. That's my spot. I know where to go. But here it is. When I leave that seat and I walk out those doors, somebody else takes over Jeff's seat. It is no longer Jeff's seat. Now, what if I told you that there's coming a day where Jeff's seat in this world will be gone? It'll no longer be occupied by Jeff any longer. Somebody else will come along and take up that spot, that seat. They'll, it'll be theirs. 
And that's true for all of us because it, we are nothing more than just passing ships. We're, we are not permanent for this world. We lost that in Adam. That, and I don't know what you think about it, but I'm going I'm to believe that if Adam had never sinned, Adam would still be here. That he, that if he had never committed that sin against God, he, he, he would have never given up his seat. But he would have been permanent because that's what God created him to be. And, and whatever the relationship was with him and Eve in that garden, it would still be. It would have remained. You, see, the, Brother Chuck has said this not too, it was, well, it's been a while now. Uh, that just shows you how old we're getting. You start remembering things from way back. I'm going to quote Brother Chuck this morning. Uh, but what he said was that he believed that uh, the reason, one of the reasons why Adam ate of that fruit is because he loved Eve so much he couldn't stand the idea of being without her. Now, I like that. But you know what? Here's the failed philosophy on his own part, is that had he remained faithful to God and not been disobedient, he would have remained and, and maybe his wife too. Think about it for, for a little while because when we, when we generally try to put our own plans into motion, we, we create the opposite of what it is that we're trying to create, where God himself knows right well what he's doing. We are but transient people who are moving beyond this world into another. In Luke, the 12th chapter, the scripture says that there's a man whether this been something that Jesus overheard or uh, etern from eternity past, he, he saw this happening. Anyhow, this, this is a story that he relates to his people. And he said, this will I do. There was a man who said, unto, he said, I'll do this. Because he was a little worried. Wor worried about all the possessions of which he had. Worried that he was going to lose the possessions if he didn't take care of them. Worried that he, he didn't have enough already stockpiled, you know, as far as life was concerned. So it says, this will I do. I will pull down my burns and build up greater. And there will I bestow my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul that has, uh, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night shall thy soul be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? He did not understand the idea that he was transient. He thought he had all the time in the world to do the things in which he wanted to do. He had time to build greater barns. He had time to fill those barns up. He had time to sit back, eat, drink, and, and, and take his ease. He had time for all this stuff, but he did not know that his soul was going to be required of him that very evening. Listen to me. If you if you hear nothing more than what I than than what I've said up to this point, understand this: you are not meant to be eternal anymore. Not now. Not the way you were born into this world. Your your life is but but just for a moment. But there is a life eternal for you to look towards, and that is found in Jesus. In the unseeable things, we we find in Romans the first chapter, verse eighteen, where Scripture says. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which they that, that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For what? The invisible things. Things that we don't see. Things that are out there. Things which automatically should give mankind the idea that, that God is. Right, that that even though we can't see it with our eyes, when I hear the 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 ocean, the, the waves rush in, I know it's there. I I know when it beats upon upon the ground that God is saying unto that wave, "This is as far as you can go." Right? There there are things in in this life that automatically should te testify unto you and I that God is. When you look up in the sky and you see the moon and you see all the stars, it should give you an indication that there is a Creator out there. You know, it that there are there are things in life that ought to remind us that God is, and that God has greater things in store for each and every one of us. 2 Corinthians 5, the scripture says this to us. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, 
We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our our house, which is from heaven. I have no idea what what our spiritual body is going to look like, what it's going to be like. I know this, though. It'll be far greater than this one I live in right now. <laughs> I li- And I like me. You see, I, I, I like me. So when, 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 when I, I go about life, I, I, I'm okay with who I am. But I know this, that, that this is going to die one day. It's going to give, give up the spirit that is within it. And that spirit is going back to God who gave it. I know all these things. I, I know that, that this life is short. It's, 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 to me, it's way too short. There are things that I wish that, that I had another 20 years. I wish I had more time. But I know I have what, got, what has been given to me. But mostly, I know that there is life beyond this one. And that life is going to be far greater than the one I have right now. The body in which I will receive will be a far superior body. The the enjoyment, the joy in which I will receive in living in that body will be a far superior joy than I enjoy right now. You, you, you see that, that what God has done in Christ is, is He has provided for us the things in which we we will one day receive, though for now they are part of the invisible things that are out there. A good man loves God better than he loves himself. And that's just a fact. That you and I when we when we come to a realization that that God is, is far greater than we are ourselves, and we put ourselves into His hands, then we will understand that that God is greater than we are. That He has provided something far superior than what we could do for our own selves. Lastly, in Psalm one hundred two, verse twelve. This was back to our. Our text, he says, But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. A promise that has been made unto Israel is a promise that God will keep. So he's still been watching over her, he's still protecting her, he's still providing for her. But if I may say to you this morning that just as God has favored her, he favors you today. That a promise that is made to you is a promise that God is going to keep. He is, he is not going to let you down. He is not going to neglect you. He is going to always be by your side and provide for you the things in which he himself has promised to provide. You could trust God. You can put your faith in him. You can you can remember what it is that he had actually told you and 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 live according to accordingly because in what God himself has promised you, God will one day fulfill it. So when I say to you this, I know that there will be coming a time when I will say to this world goodbye. I'll say goodbye to my my family, my friends, my loved ones. I will one day leave this all. But I'm never completely gone because I have the Lord. That I know for a certainty, if this were my last day upon planet Earth, that I would go to be in heaven with God. I don't doubt that. I don't have... I don't have any anything that, that, that makes me want to move away from that. I know that to be a reality. My prayer today is that you know that. that. That you know that if you were to leave this world, that you would go to be with God. 
that and here's the point and, and I, I, I try to make it as, as quick as I can what he told unto them is this that he says thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come this is your time the thief of the cross in 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 Luke the 23rd chapter he said unto Jesus, he, he said, when you come into your, in, in, into your place, remember me. Remember me. And so here on, on, on Memorial Day, we, we look at, the, at what others have done for us, right? Well, the thief on the cross was saying to Jesus, when you come to your paradise, remember me. Please. Remember me. Remember me when you come into your glory. Remember me when, when you're, you're dealing out grace. Remember me as a, as a person who needs mercy. And what did Jesus say unto him? Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Today. Today could be your day. Whoever you are, whatever you've done, understand that Jesus died for you. The great... the the, the great uh, life changer, when you begin to look at, at things that we are in need of in our lives, Jesus died for you. Today could be your day to accept Jesus as your Savior and to start off a, a life with God as your Father and Jesus as your Savior. Today could be the day. Will you accept Him? Don't, you know, I, I think about that thief on the cross because he was basically saying this, today's my day. Today, I will, if, if, if you'll remember me when you come into your, into your glory, then today will be my day. Could today be your day? Will you let Jesus have his way in your heart? Today, while you have this opportunity. Let's go to the Lord a word of prayer. to the Lord. 